Okay, so we're out in the garage here to start this video off because I just picked up this dynamo cabinet from a friend who had it sitting in his garage for a long, long time. Uh, he doesn't even know how long it's been sitting there. And he called me up and said, hey, I got this cabinet. I don't want, I don't want it anymore. I have no use for it. If you want it, come and get it. I said, absolutely. So uh, I, I went and picked it up. Uh, it's got a K7000 in it that's complete, all original. And when I say original, I mean the original chassis for this tube, and it's all married together, and it's been untouched for I don't know how many years, unpowered, never turned on, and all that time that he's had it. Uh, so I don't know if it works. So we're going we're gonna to take it out of here. We're going to put it back on the bench and see if, A, it turns on. B, if it does turn on, uh, what it looks like. Uh, maybe you have to rejuvenate it. We'll find out as well. Uh, and then see if it does not turn on, we'll go ahead and get it repaired and all fixed up. So the purpose of this video is going to be the cleanup and repair of the monitor. And then I'll figure out what to do with the cabinet later. It's in good shape. Um, the This side here has been kind of cleaned off and picked clean. Except the problem is that it was in a flood. Um, you can see the bottom of the cabinet is uh, soaked and it's expanded. And there's a piece missing. You can obviously see the, the line separating where the water was. And if we look at down here, uh, you can clearly see how it uh, is good and good, and then it swells up and, and expands down there. So the whole bottom down here is expanded about uh, six inches or so from the bottom up to the top all around. Uh, this side here is not as expanded, but it is damaged, so the bottom six inches or so of the cabinet all around will most likely need to be replaced. Uh, I don't know if I want to go through that hassle or that uh, that trouble. I may end up trying to throw some wood hardener on there and clamp the sides together and kind of compress that back together and um, unswell it, if you will. Because from about right there up, it's perfect. The cabinet's overall very solid in very good shape except for about the eight, the bottom eight inches all around. So I don't know if I want to go through and actually replace the whole bottom of the cabinet. I'm going to try and do what I can and rescue this because I actually do have um, a spare coin door and a spare control panel with the six button Street Fighter layout. I have all the necessary parts and pieces to kind of bring this back together and convert it to a, a good uh, dynamo cabinet if you will. Um, but the first step is going to be to tackle the repair on this monitor if it needs it or at least the rejuvenation and restoration so that'll be the purpose of this video is getting the monitor all fixed up uh and then i have other projects here to the left i don't know if i want to show them or not <laughs> i got an outrun sitting over here i'll show it what the hell i have an outrun sitting right here and the outrun um has a bad monitor as well the game operates but the monitor is dead. It's another 19-inch K7000. It's totally dead. It's it's bad. Uh, and the machine is in really, really, really rough shape. There's no artwork on the other side. The plastic bezel on the controls is sticking out. It's all broken. The bezel's broken. It's in really rough and bad shape. So, uh, But anyway, this will this video will be for this monitor. So let's get it out of here, get it inside, get it on the test bench, and let's see if we can work some magic on it. Okay, so the monitor has been removed successfully from the cabinet, and I gotta say, it's in immaculate condition. And the reason for that is that this was actually installed upside down in the cabinet. If you look at it now the way that it is, um, you have to imagine when I pulled it out, it was actually upside down. So um, the anode and the chassis and everything were facing down towards the bottom of the cabinet. Now I assume that's because they put uh, the game that was in there, uh, they didn't know about taking the yoke connector off and switching the wires around to flip the image So they just took the monitor itself and turned it upside down, but that was a blessing for me Because the chassis is just in phenomenal condition. It's super clean. No dust. No debris. No grime like it was right off the factory floor I mean, it's just in exquisite condition. It's truly unbelievable so having this thing upside down in the machine really saved this uh, dirt and grime and, and just everything. Now the flyback's a different story of this area here because of course this generates a bunch of static electricity and everything around the area so the flyback itself's a bit dirty but for all intents and purposes the chassis is pretty much basically brand new looking so that, that's very interesting. And I don't even think that this was ever actually removed from the tube because the glue is still intact here that's not really glue, it's more like an adhesive, um, like a eh, like a caulk, like uh, from a caulking gun that you use to caulk your windows and stuff. I think that's pretty much what this stuff is. It doesn't um, 
get damaged by heat or loosen up. I don't think that neck bore has even ever been removed from this. I think this is all original from the factory. They put it in that dynamo machine and it's been that way ever since. So very interesting. So I guess the next step here, um, given how good this looks and the overall um, condition, it does have the white knob flyback. So we're, I'm skeptical of that. As a matter of fact, let's see if it's cracked. Almost every white knob flyback that's still in existence today is going to have a crack on it somewhere. And I'm curious if that's the case with this. Uh, let's look. Is our fuse blown? I can't tell, but let's look at the flyback here. Is it cracked? Uh, yep, it's cracked right there. We. Yep, it's cracked right across the focus. What about down here by the screen area? No, that appears to be... Uh, that right there appears to be the only crack. That's amazing. This might be a very low hour 7000. Even though it's covered in dirt and grime, it could be a relatively low hour 7000. Uh, well, interesting. Well, it's got original flyback, original caps. Everything on here is absolutely original, so it's going to need to rebuild for sure. But uh, let's go ahead and get it hooked up and see if it works. Uh, let's move this back around here. Okay, let's for now, let's go ahead and use the test pattern generator. Oh, let's go back over to this side. All right. Uh, let's set this back to standard and plug her in. Stay on there, you're a brat bastard. Okay, uh, flip this on. Let's remove our power from our test monitor. Plug in power here. Uh, it's hard to do this with one hand, but kind of want to get all this all at once. Oh, darn it, it's the wrong kind. Well, uh, I'm going to have to get another connector here from my bargain bin of connectors. Uh, do I have the right one is the question. It does not appear that I have the correct one. Well, I'm going to have to cut away, do a little magic. When I come back, we'll have this hooked up and we're all ready for uh, testing here. So hang on one moment. So I decided to go ahead and just use some alligator clips. It's not the safest thing in the world, but just for initial testing here to see if it powers on and gets a signal what it looks like, uh, it'll be okay. So we're still on standard and we're turned on. And uh, everything in here should be okay. We're powered on. Let me turn the light off so we can get an idea of what it looks like here. And if it works at all. Uh, first time powering up in uh, who knows how many years. One, two, three. Well, how do you do? Okay. That came right on. Oh, and sure enough, uh, it's upside down. So if this was in the machine this way, it'd be correct. So we just need to flip the uh, yoke connector, but it, look at that, it works. It even has a decent picture. Uh, if we turn our contrast down, that should get rid of our bleed, yep. And we don't really even have any uh, geometry problems. This looks pretty good. Let's do H position and move it slightly mm, right there is about perfect. Yeah, look at that. Uh, RGB. There you go. Pretty filthy dirty. Pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, there's some burn in here. There's this arc across here. It's hard to see, but there's an arc that goes around like that. You can kind of see it. Um, there you go, like that. Uh, let's try and adjust our focus a bit. Can we do that? Um, yeah, it's too dirty. But that's, uh, we have a working uh, chassis right out of the gate. Not bad at all. 
So these are all original caps. So this thing is a survivor. Original everything. Pristine condition, original caps, original everything. Fully working with apparently no issues. But we're still going to recap it. We're still going to put a new flyback on because the white knob flybacks are a huge high uh, failure rate. I almost said success rate. <laughs> a high failure rate. And I'll keep this one because it is working. So I'll keep this one in case I run out at some point and need one for testing. I'll keep that one since it's working. And it's not all cracked up and beyond, beyond uh, usage. I'll keep it, but we're still going to put a new one in. We're still going to cap. We're still going to full reflow. We're going to do all the normal stuff. We'll go over all that. But uh, yeah, initial testing reveals a fully working 7,000 for free. So uh, we don't even need to rejuvenate it. It powered up and it came to life fairly quickly. We have good uh, colors. I'd say we are good. It needs some degaussing because it was upside down in the machine. And when I took it out and put it in here right side up, of course it throws off the magnetic field because it's used to being the other way for so many years. Uh, but no big deal. So if we actually go to like an all blue screen here, uh, does it go away if I back up? No. This area here is uh, gauzed, so we need to go through and do a good degaussing. And it's got some burn in here, and, but it's not overly too bad. Uh, anyway, okay, well, next step is to get this off of the tube, and then we'll go through and do all the inspection and do the reflow and the rework and hook it back up and do more testing and call this uh, a success, hopefully. So let's get this off the tube and do the work and inspection and see how that goes. All right, well, I'm really just blown away by how good a condition this chassis is. It, I've, I, I can't recall in recent memory just how clean and good a shape of one like this has come across the bench really ever. Um, of course, it's dirty around here from static electricity and things, and my hands are filthy from the tube being dirty. Uh, but still, just I'm, I'm blown away by how good this is. But anyway, uh, let's turn it around. I have not seen the bottom yet. Uh, I did take the back cover off here because this thing, uh, the ground wire had never been removed. I didn't want to cut it, so I just desoldered it from its location here. Um, further evidence of it never having been taken out. Uh, all right, well, it appears we know it works, so everything up here we can assume is okay. Let's turn it around and check out the solder joints for R101. Um, and R97 and the whole and then R104 and R89 all of the normal suspect bad solder joint areas let's turn it around and see what kind of condition those are in holy cow well right away <laughs> we got this in the nick of time because just like I said R89 here this guy right there Look at this solder pad is holding on for dear life right here. Uh, let's get our tweezers here. Uh, this has almost right here. This has almost nothing left on it. There's, uh, I mean, this is like 0 0.68 seconds away from cracking. There's almost, there's almost nothing, almost nothing left on that. Same thing with this one. And, you know, this is probably okay, that's probably okay, but this is almost very close to cracking. There's almost nothing on that one. R101 here, very common, oxidized, but still somewhat intact, not, not close to cracking. There's still a good joint there. It is oxidized, so we're going to have to uh, clean all that old solder off. See, it should be shiny like these. You can see how dull and, and gray this one is. So it's oxidized from heat. Uh, the other side of that is this one right here. So both of those need to be repaired, uh, but that's the very common. Now look at look at this. See this in this light? You can see this this ring around here. That is the solder, almost ready to crack. So we caught that in the nick of time. The other other end of that is here, and this one is yeah. You can see there is almost the same thing. So R eighty nine we caught in the nick of time. R one hundred one seems to be okay, but that's another problem area. Uh, let's look around here. The uh, look at this flyback, other crack joint right here. Focus. We got. It's uh, in person. It looks worse than it is, I guess. But right here, 
when I look at it in person, this one here is about to crack as well. Um, if we look at the rest of these, they seem okay, but this one just caught my eye initially. It, it looks better in, on camera than in person, but right around here, in person, is about to crack. Right there. Uh, so let's zoom back out. This doesn't. Uh, this does not have any factory mods on. This is a very, very, very early, very early version of the chassis because it doesn't have a single factory mod. The ground, the ground mod, the jumpers from right here over to here. That ground mod's not there. The ground mod across uh, D18 with the capacitor's not there. Um, we don't have the capacitor up here for the vertical deflection circuit. So this is uh, very, very early in the 7000's life because it doesn't have any factory mods. Um, there's almost hardly any solder on the video headers, but none of them are cracked. Yeah, this is just like... The, the solder, all the solder joints on this are like super, super, super ultra thin. And just this close to cracking on, all, <laughs> on a lot of stuff, what it looks like. But the R89 is the most crucial, and that's uh, that's really really bad. The worst of the joints I see is R89. Um, maybe this one here for the flatback, but we're changing that anyway, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, R101 we need to hit, but that's about really the only problem areas. The rest of this stuff just needs a good reflow. Um, voltage regulator, video header pins, R103. Um, various things. So we'll hit all that, but not too bad. Not not bad overall. Just a couple issues that we absolutely assumed were going to be bad, R101, R89. Um, sometimes you can have the same issues here with R103, is it? 104? R104 is this other cer white ceramic one right here. Um, these can be just as bad as R89, and in fact they're not far off from being that way. They're super thin as well. Like you can see just how thin this is. There's almost no solder on there at all. So, yeah, that's why you uh, do an inspection and a reflow and all this because all that stuff needs redone. All right, so hopefully fairly, we'll have this done fairly quickly. There's not going to be any need for testing, not going to be any need for repair or replacement of parts. All this is going to need is a reflow, uh, flyback, and a cap kit. So let's get all the work done and then hook it back up and get it all adjusted and fine-tuned and call this a success. Uh, we shall start. Someone's got green cut off all the way down. We'll start by wiping these pots like we always do and then put them in the center. And they got blue cut off all the way down. Man, someone's got this all kind of adjusted out of whack. Now if you've got a, a picture tube that is just tip-top shape, you should ideally have all these set to center. All of your cutoff pots and drive pots, all six of these pots should be dead center, and that should be perfect settings for RGB and white balance and color balance. But as the tubes get older, and as the, the guns get tired and more tired and more tired, you have to compensate and compensate and adjust all this stuff. So ideally, if you've got a picture tube that looks fantastic and it, all of these are in the center, you should be able to run that for quite a long time without any problem. When you start having to adjust these higher and higher is when you're starting to get weaker guns and weaker guns and things like that. So, all right, let me grab... Uh, you want cap kits? I got cap kits. I got enough cap kits to choke a camel. Uh, just got to find the 7000s. These are all Geo 7. These are all uh, 74, 7500. Um, more Geo 7s. Uh, 4900. And. Oh, come on. I don't have any of these facing me. I can't read what these are. Okay, 7,000. So let's grab a 7,000 kit. And let's put all of these back. All right. And we'll grab a flyback. And like I say, I'm going to save this one and put it back in the box just so I can have a spare 
in case I run out or need one for testing, we should be able to reuse that one. Now, ideally, ideally you don't want to replace the flyback if you don't need to. If you don't need to replace it and it's working fine, don't replace it. But in this case, with the white knob, the white knob has a very high failure rate. That coupled with the fact that it has a crack across it already, it's only going to get worse. So I'm going to change it to, because it needs to. Now, if you have a black knob flyback and it's not cracked and in good shape and doesn't need replaced, don't replace it. I don't like. There's no reason to replace parts if they're good. If they're if they're operational and working and in good shape, there's no need to replace it. So that's my public service announcement for this video. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we have our flyback, we have our cap kit. All right, I am going to cut away. We've all seen cap kits done countless times. I'm going to cut away, and when I come back, I will have all the caps changed out, the new flyback, and then we'll put it back on the tube, and we'll see how it looks. Uh, so stand by one moment. And about one hour later, it's all done. Full cap kit, including filter cap, uh, full reflow, new flyback, the works. Uh, I can also reflow the neck board, did all that work as well. And let's check it out here. So, uh, here's the solder work on the flyback. And I went ahead and just, when I reflowed R89 uh, here, I think that was, I always forget. Yeah, R89. When I reflowed R89, I went ahead and just put a solder bridge across here for the, the one leg of R101. Uh, and the same thing over here, I just put a little solder bridge across there from here to that next point on the on the trace, and that's not touching, so that's good to go. So it will behoove you, if you redo these, to put the little solder bridge across here or to put a little um, component leg jumper. Uh, that will uh, get rid of some of the uh, resistance, the high resistance on these pads that cause the pad to oxidize and burn up over time. This will reduce that and give it more of a pathway and, and lower the resistance value, not of the resistor, but it'll lower the resistance on the pad that causes this to, to burn up, so to speak, so because of the heat and everything. Um, so I, may, I'm, I misspoke a bit. It won't lower the resistance of the resistor or re lower the resistance in circuit. It'll just create more of a surface area to disperse the heat, so it won't actually burn up. So this is a bit of a preventative measure here on the R101, uh, this guy right here. The most common failure point on the solder pads is R101 and R89. So we got we took care of those and I reflowed R104, uh, these two pads right there, um, and went through and reflowed anything and everything else including the header pins, the voltage regulator, the uh, horizontal coils, uh, the horizontal coil, uh, D18, C38, um, C36 was okay, HOT was okay. We got the new flyback installed. Uh, I did the connectors here that run to the neck board. These two guys right there. I hit up the vertical IC. And really anything and everything that needed reflowed has been reflowed. So it needs a little bit more cleanup, but it's good enough for now. So all of the work is now done. So there's nothing really left to do but to go ahead and hook it all back up see what happens. So let's do that very thing. We have all of our color pots at the center, so I'm also going to go through, assuming that nothing blows up from my rework, I'm going to go through and make sure that I show you guys how to set the black level. Now color balancing is a whole other process and ultimately I don't really worry about color balancing because each what, what looks good to one person won't look good to another. There's a, a process to properly set the color balance but what I say is I just set all the color pots to center and then I adjust them as needed for my personal preference because the next person will come along and say, oh, that's too blue or oh, that's too red. So, I mean, technically there's a correct procedure for doing it, but I, I just set it to what I like as far as color. But for the white balance, I'm going to go through that procedure and I'll show you how to do all that. So let's go ahead and get this hooked back up and cross our fingers. Hopefully it doesn't explode and it works just fine out of the gate after the rework. And then we'll go through and readjust colors and... Um, I'll show you the white balancing or the dark balancing and go from there. So here we go. All right, so everything's hooked back up, ready for testing. We have anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and there's no remote board because on the 19, all the pots are actually on the board. Uh, but we're all back together, secure, ready to go. So let's, oh, I actually think I might have left it on the whole time. Well, that's not good. 
Uh, we'll have to find out if it still works or not. Uh, I also went through and cleaned the picture tube. Uh, this was the first cleaning attempt. This was the second cleaning attempt. And then this was the third cleaning attempt, and it was just that dirty. It still has kind of a like an overspray, clear overspray feel to it, so I'll have to use some alcohol or something to get that off. But that's no big deal. Uh, but for now, we're all back together and ready to test. So let's turn it on, see if my battery has died. <laughs> it's only been about an hour, so hopefully it still works. Uh, let's turn it back on, make sure nothing explodes, make sure it at least still works from the work I did, and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, the uh, new flybacks ship with the screen pot all the way down. So I turned it up very slightly, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And uh, so hopefully we'll get a picture here. So let's see. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, springs back to life. Do we have an image? Well, look how fast that came up. And yes, we do. That's too bright. And it looks like uh, it's working. And a little bit of a fidget there. Um, okay. Now that it works, or it's working again, or it's still working, still working is probably the best way to say that. Let's adjust our focus, so we'll uh, reach over here and hit the focus. Well, that looks pretty good right there. Alright, so let's adjust our uh, black level. Or the... Uh, can I get in here without it? Okay. So you can see how the background is visible. You can see the raster in the background. This is going to follow me around. This stupid refresh rate crap. Anyway, so you can see the background there. You shouldn't be able to see that. So we start by turning our brightness all the way down. Contrast all the way down. Screen pot all the way down. Okay, so now screen pot, brightness, contrast all completely down. So now you, now you turn the screen pot up until you get the horizontal raster lines. So let's turn this up. And there are the lines. So we turn it down. You know what? Let's get to... Let's turn this off here. There. Let's turn this up until you get... See, there's our raster. If we turn this down until they just barely go away, right about there. Nope, you can still see them a little bit. Right about th there. So right there is the optimum setting for our screen pot. You turn it up until you get the raster lines. Then you turn it back down until the raster lines just barely go away. And that is the optimum setting for the screen pot. Then you supplement with your brightness and contrast. So we turn brightness up a bit. Oh, you know what? I gotta turn the screen back on. There we go. Uh, brightness, see? Uh, right about... See, that brings back our raster there. You want the background to be completely black. So if we decrease vertical size here, there you go. Now we'll turn our brightness back up. And you can see, you want the background to be completely black, right about there. That's where you want to keep your brightness. Then your contrast, if the contrast affects that, you want to turn your brightness back down. So right there, contrast... Oh, See how I can turn up contrast and it doesn't really affect... Uh, it does affect the background. Let's keep our contrast right about there. And then if we adjust our black level back down a bit, roughly there. So that is where you want to keep that, and that looks gorgeous. That is beautiful. You want your background to be black. You don't want any white coming in through the blacks. You want the blacks to be black. And that's how you adjust that. So that's my recommendation on how to do that. I'm sure other people might have other ways of doing it, but that's how I do it. Screen pot all the way down, brightness all the way down, contrast all the way down, screen pot up till you get the raster lines, and then back down till they just go away, and then turn up the black level or brightness till you get uh, a white background, and then back down till the white background just barely goes away until the background's black, and then turn up your contrast as desired. If the contrast turning up affects your brightness, turn the brightness back down till your background's black again. So that's the quick and easy way to adjust for your, your black level and your white, white balance and things like that. Now, again, there's a much more involved procedure, but that's just the quick and easy way to do it. So, now that this is working, uh, it looks like it has the degauss circuit is doing its job because we are no longer gaussed. Look at that. Pretty darn good. 
of obviously I did flip the ver the uh, yellow and green vertical winding uh, connector on the yoke to flip the image so now that we're correctly uh, right side up all right so now um, with that all being with this working again or still working I should say again still working uh, fully rebuilt fully repaired uh, adjusted properly for our black level uh, well I say that it's it's adjusted properly for our black level with this I'm gonna put a, hook up an actual PCB here and the test pattern generator I don't like I don't like adjusting colors and 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 uh, brightness and stuff because the video output of the test pattern generator is, is much higher um, much higher voltage than it is on a standard PCB so if you get everything dialed in with your TPG and you put a real PCB in you're gonna have to go through and redo all of your brightness and contrast not into, not necessarily your colors the color should still be okay but you'll have to redo your brightness and contrast because this is a higher video output so that being said, I'm going to turn this off, and there we go. You should, you should, without a video signal, you should have a black image. If you have any kind of white coming through at all, then your brightness or your screen pot is too high. So now, um, let's disconnect our video. It's not really a good idea. It's not recommended to run these chassis with no video input. They don't generally like that, but for the purposes of this video, it's not gonna be a big deal. Uh, let me see. I gotta grab my uh, test board here. Uh, can I do this without making a loud noise and a big mess here? Probably not. Um, maybe I can. Okay. Let's set this up here. And I have to turn this off real quick so I can plug this in safely. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, all right, let's turn this back on. Oh, you know what? I gotta hook up the video source. I am not prepared. I am sorry. I get a little overzealous sometimes and forget to do what I have to do before we turn the camera on. All right. Okay, now we're ready. Let's see what we look. What this looks like with the actual board hooked up. Vertical hold. Uh, why? There we go. Yeah, see how much, see how dark that is. We got to turn up our brightness here. Again, see that that's too high. So we go down to roughly there. So right there is about where our brightness should be. And that's not bad at all. Sorry, my rotisserie there fell down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got some gauz gousing here. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, yeah, it needs brightness and contrast turned up because the top half of the monitor is a bit darker. See how the top is darker? I think that's just a gousing issue. Over here, it's okay. And as you go this way, it gets a bit darker. That's just a gousing problem. Uh, but let's adjust our H position. Uh, that's right here. Mm, okay, let's go ahead and get this on a tripod and I can make my adjustments without having to make everybody sick here. So one moment. All right, so now um, let's grab our adjustment tool. And now that we have an actual real PCB hooked up, let's go through the test procedure here again. Uh, if we just simply go to, can I go to the menu here and just hold that in there? Is that going to stay? That's not going to stay. MK1, you have to keep the, there we go. All right, so brightness all the way down, contrast all the way down, screen pot eh, all the way down. Okay, screen pot up until you get the raster lines and then back down until they just go away. Turn brightness up until your background gets white and then back down until the background is dark again. And then we'll turn our contrast up. And if it affects your background to where it's white, turn the brightness back down a little bit. And there you go. That looks pretty damn good. Still got some gousing over here, but that's not a big deal. Like to go to uh, monitor patterns and red screen. Yeah, so we got gousing up here. Um, 
what I'm about to do, you should never do. Under any circumstance, do not do what I'm about to do. You can damage the mask. But I have a speaker here, and we're going to use the speaker to degauss this. Magic. One swipe, fixed. So, asterisk. Never, ever, ever do that. Ah, oh, this was a baseball game. I can see the field. This was like an RBI baseball. Can we... And it's hard to see. Uh, here's the home plate, and then here's the diamond. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see. Here's home plate, and then here's the diamond. Here is uh, second base down here. Uh, the score is actually... The score is down here, right there. So this was some type of baseball game. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, okay, green screen. Blue screen. Perfect. So let's get out of here. Look at that. Pretty good. It needs a bit... Uh, can I turn brightness up slightly? No, that's too high. We'll try more contrast. But that looks... Right now all the colors are centered. And that looks pretty freaking good. Oh, we're too blue. No, we're too blue. Let's turn our blue drive down a bit. Ah, much better. Much better. Yep, I say we are in business. Uh, let's adjust our H position. Right there. Vertical size, right there. Yeah, pretty good. Can we adjust our width? Does the width control work? Uh, let's grab our adjustment tool and see if we can... Yep, shrink it in. There you go. Right about... Uh, right about... There, and then we need to shift it over up slightly. Well, I'll say that's pretty good. So yeah, that works. It looks like we're 100% uh, operational. Colors need a little bit of adjustment, maybe a little bit more red. That's better. Yeah, I'd say that is good. Time's up. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. Um, successful repair. Well, I guess not repair, successful uh, rejuvenation, if you will, of the chassis. <laughs> so, um, hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when uh, new videos are up. And uh, comment if you want. Let me know what you think. And stay tuned for more. Got lots more to do on the way. So, appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.